Hello and welcome back to another What's New video for Inventor 2023. If you haven't spoken to me before, my name is Jason Kelly and I'm an application specialist here at Symmetry. In the 2023 release, Autodesk have continued with a the theme of working with customers to drive the software forward by taking ideas and submissions of the Inventor forum and feedback communities. These implemented ideas have given us new tools and features to aim to enhance the feel and usability of the software. The first thing we're going to take a look at is the new home experience. It now offers a different, cleaner layout from previous releases, with many features remaining the same. The panel on the left hand side allows you to change the Inventor project file, as well as opening the project's dialog box from the three dot menu. The standard open and new commands are placed just below. At the bottom of this toolbar are some links to the Autodesk website, including direct access to the App Store. The main area is where you can access your recently used or pinned documents. There are toggle switches to change the view type to show a list or a grid view. If you select on the three dots next to a file, you can choose to open with options, allowing you to define which representation, including model state, you wish to open. This can be extremely useful when opening your large data sets. You can also still define the number of previewed files and even disable the home tab on startup. This is in your application options. It will help you if your inventor opening time is quite slow. The next thing we're going to take a look at is the new ray tracing method. Previously, using the built-in ray tracing method would only enable you to utilise and produce results from the CPU using the built-in Autodesk Ray Tracer. In 2023, you now have the option to use either the CPU or the GPU in a recent graphics card. The GPU ray tracing uses a path tracing algorithm, allowing your renders to continue improving their quality indefinitely. It also uses physically based rendering principles, allowing materials and lighting to represent a more realistic approach. This is all happening in the background of Inventor, so won't require any extra work. To utilize GPU ray tracing, your graphics card will need to reach a minimum spec that is published here and on the Autodesk website. You also have, in your application options, the ability to choose whether you want to run CPU or GPU ray tracing. This is under the Hardware tab and will indicate whether your graphics card meets the specification. Utilising this function will not only allow you to produce more photorealistic images, but will also allow you to produce quicker results using the Noise Reduction tool. Normally, when you kick off a render, it will give you a blurry display but by turning on this tool, it will immediately reduce the amount of noise that you are pulling through to the image. A quick point with this though, you may lose some detailing in the final render, but it will give you much quicker results. Therefore, if you were looking for a photorealistic image, we would still recommend leaving this option off, but for a quick render, this can be very useful for some time-saving capabilities. At the minute, this is only enabled for the ray tracing option in the view tab and not included in Inventor Studio, which will continue to use the Autodesk Ray Tracer. Just a final few general enhancements before we move into the specific environments. And this first one may just catch a few people out as there have been a term change from master to primary. This is in model states, view representations and positional representations. The new primary state won't affect any changes apart from the name, but more importantly, any iLogic code that uses the term master isn't affected by this change. There is also an improvement to the iLogic functionality, as you can now bring through any global iLogic rules and iLogic forms to a ribbon. If you go to the Customize tab, you can choose these custom rules from the Choose Commands From area. This is going to allow you quick access to your rules and completely customise your ribbons to suit your requirements. Moving into the sketch environment, and when adding text in 2023, you now have the ability to not only pull through any parameters to the model, 
but you can also bring through any eye properties, both standard and custom. This can be useful when adding labels to models, and also if you need to emboss or engrave a property onto the model such as part number or material. Also new in the sketch environment is the ability to select broken projections. This tool will pick up any projected geometry that has lost or broken its reference when you've had to edit a feature higher up the tree. Once selected, you can either re-reference the projection or delete it. Now having a look at the part environment, the tolerancing area has been updated to align with the new 2022 functionality. Firstly, you are now able to access the full tolerance dialog box from inside parameters. It also gives further detail in the tolerancing column. A big change is that you are now able to vary the tolerance between model states, both at part and assembly level. This will give you the ability to test and show, either in the model or on a drawing, whether components and parts will work with one another at maximum and minimum tolerances. This also filters through to the edit via spreadsheet option for model states, so you can use Excel's functionality to configure your tolerancing. Finally, when you export them via an XML, the tolerances for each model state will pull through. The feature relationships area has also been given new functionality, as you are now able to select on suppressed features. If you haven't used it before, the part feature relationships dialog can be accessed by right clicking on a feature and selecting relationships. The dialog will then give you the ability to show what features have relationships with that selected feature. This gives you an idea of what will be affected if you make a change or if you are looking to resolve any errors. You can work up and down the model browser by choosing the make selected icon. Also in the part environment, a new tool has been created called Mark. This tool is going to help you take features that you want to use for laser marking, etching and engraving and export them to a DXF or DWG file. So let's have a look at how it works. Prior to using the tool, you will have, as normal in Inventor, created your 2D sketch or geometry in order for you to choose. You can then select on the feature or multiple features that you want to mark. The next option is to select whether you wish to mark it just on the surface that the geometry is currently on, or mark it through all the geometry, which will mark it through any solids in its way. This is similar to the through all command. You can also create selection sets, similar to when creating a fillet, to mark geometry both on the surface and through all. A useful feature is that all of the information is stored in your design data so you can configure the line and layer types from your styles and standards. So for example, if you create a new style, you can configure whether you want to pull the text through just the outline of the text, or use the text strokes. You can also change the layer export types. This is dependent on whether your laser cutter needs certain line weights or colors. You will notice you can now select on these new options from the dropdown when starting the mark command. After configuration, if your design data is set globally, this will have created a library of styles and standards for your business. Once you have marked your component, you can then export out as a DXF in the usual way, by either right-clicking on the flat pattern and selecting Save Copy As, or in a non-sheet metal part by right-clicking on the face and choosing to export the face. Just a final point. If you mark the geometry, it will not appear in the folded model or in the drawing view of the folded component or a standard model. Another tweak to the sheet metal part environment is the ability to now show extended names for sheet metal components. I would recommend turning this on if you don't have it on already, but when a feature is showing extended names, it will display information about the feature rather than just showing a generalised name and sequential number. It will help when trying to identify key features that need editing and will be especially useful if you haven't modelled the part. Moving into the assembly environment and you now have the capability to change what you're displaying for suppressed parts or components in model states 
with the new bomb settings feature. Previously, if you suppressed a component in a model state, it would still remain in the bill of materials with the quantity appearing as zero. There is now a checkbox in the bomb settings for whether you want to keep this or hide the component. There is also a further setting in there to renumber all of your bomb item numbers sequentially. Just an extra point with the bomb, and in the 2022.2 release, an update was put in so that you can now select multiple cells in the bill of materials and edit them all at once. This saves time duplicating data and copying the cells. As well as these new improvements to the bomb features, model states have also gained added improvements. Firstly, in the 2022.1 release of the software, Autodesk have now given the ability to identify what eye properties differ between model states. As you add them in to a given model state, they will now appear as blue, with the master properties still remaining black. Also, in the 2022 release, when you have a substitute model state active, you are still able to use tools such as Place, Convert to Weldment, and in the Inspect ribbon, Analyzing Interference and Activating the Contact Solver. These tools are now greyed out and disabled when a substitute model state is active. This is to ensure you are utilising the correct tools at the correct model state. Finally, in the assembly environment, a couple of smaller changes have been added. Firstly, you can now suppress a constraint during placement. This will be useful when working with model states and creating driven constraints. Also, the simplify tool that was added in the 2022 release has had some behind the scenes updates. The pocket tool will now recognise extrudes, revolves and sweeps, as well as any other subtractive features. Whilst the emboss tool will now include any external or protrusive features, including things like text. There has also been a few nice changes in the drawing environment. Firstly, you can now edit the detail view once it's been placed. Previously, you could only change or add the full boundary line and connection, but you now have the ability to change the cutout and fence shape from the right-click menu. Also, it's worth mentioning that the attach option is still in there. This tool is a little bit hidden. If your model is going to be changing size and you wish to keep the detailed view pointing at a specific location, you can snap the detailed view to a point by right-clicking and choosing attach. This is especially useful if you're creating families in model states or wanting to duplicate the same drawing. Also, a couple of extra features when working with model states in the drawing environment. Firstly, you can now choose the model configuration option in the text box. This will then give you the option to display the model state name in view notes or leader text. The overlay view is also now capable of working with model states. This can be specifically useful when trying to show the manufacturing process or comparing one model state to another. One function that I believe to be quite popular is the ability to change the title block's properties to a different part or assembly. In previous releases, the title block would be populated from the model in the view that was first placed. If you then gone on to complete the drawing, there was no way of reverting the properties without having the use of iLogic you would have to delete all of the views and start again. Now, in 2023, you can right-click on the sheet and choose which view you wish to populate the title block for the primary property source. Continuing with properties in the drawing environment, and now, when placing a dimension and editing the text, you have the ability to pull through not only the parameters from the model, but any eye properties you may also require. This is similar to placing your standard text in a drawing. The final area we're going to look at is the relationship with Fusion. In the 2022 release, a button was added to allow you to send your inventor models directly to Fusion Teams. This has further been enhanced in this release, allowing you to make use of the areas and tools available within Fusion. The new functionality now sits under a Fusion 360 ribbon. You can choose to send your model to a specific environment in Fusion, such as generative design, subtractive or additive manufacture, or the simulation environment. Once the command is started, 
you have the option to choose which team and the location of where you wish to save the file. It will, if you've chosen the tick box, load up Fusion and start the study and environment for you. This seamless link between the products will give you a further array of tools to work with. If you're looking for update training or have any questions regarding the new software, then please get in touch with us here at Symmetry. Thank you.